Solicitors. Rapid Solicitors, sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Accident compensation and medical negligence claims. And welcome to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. This week we're in Sheffield for round four of the biggest rival in British ice hockey. And joining alongside me steering a HMS Highlight Show ship is Dave Sims. Dave, we've got a lot to get through in this hour and I know you're suffering a bit. You've got man flu. A little bit of man flu. Anna, you're very lucky you never have to put up with this. If you ladies did, we'd never hear the end of it, would we boys? Just stay well away when okay. I'm talking to you. Dave, the, the Sheffield Steelers, this is a big game for them considering how they've got on against the Panthers in recent weeks. Well, they haven't got on against the Panthers, have they? Game four of the series between the two biggest clubs in British ice hockey, and right now the Nottingham Panthers own the Sheffield Steelers. Both Challenge Cup games, Panthers victories. And then, of course, last Saturday in Lower Parliament Street, Nottingham win again. And right now, they're just playing a damn sight better than Sheffield. What's the problem? Why can't they seem to win when they're playing against the Panthers? What's, what is it? Well, one of the great problems they've got is they can't score. Those three previous games, the Nottingham Panthers have shut the Sheffield Steelers out twice. And in fact, in the one game that the Sheffield Steelers did score, that was the 4-2 loss here. It was 4-0, five minutes to go, two late goals. Interesting, reading the local press here in the week, Jeff Legui, speaking in the Sheffield Star, said that the Sheffield Steelers are trying to be too pretty. Close your eyes, shoot the puck, see what happens. And um, perhaps we're going to see just a lot more shots on Kowalski tonight. They've got to find a way past Kowalski. We can't have ice hockey players being too pretty now, can we? No, it wouldn't no, work. No, no. Wouldn't work. The Panthers, though, I mean, they've had a bit of an indifferent few weeks, but they seem to win when it matters. Now, they've won the games that they have to win, the Nottingham Panthers, and as you know, they're my title favourite still. They've lost a couple of games in uh, Coventry, a couple of games to Belfast, a game in Cardiff. Well, whoever wins the league are going to lose those games. So uh, I don't think there's too much to worry about from Nottingham right now. Sheffield have got to make a stance tonight if they're going to be considered to be serious title contenders. And I'm with a man who had a very rare day off yesterday, assistant Panthers coach Rick Strachan. Rick, rare day off for you guys yesterday for the Panthers. Do you think that will uh, benefit you tonight? Oh, definitely. Uh, well, you know, we, it's, it's just tough playing back-to-back -back games. Uh, the boys had a little uh, light gym session yesterday and uh, they'll be fresh tonight and hopefully we can come out of the gates quick. Now, we all know about the rivalry between the Steelers and the Panthers, but usually the standard's pretty even, but it's probably fair to say this season you own them. Well, I think we've had some success early against them. I wouldn't say we've owned them. Uh, you know, the first two games were, you know, maybe, you know, a little flattering to us. And the, the third game was was a close game that could have went either way. Either way, so no, I, I wouldn't say that we've owned them. Uh, that's that would be pretty uh, bad to say. But no, we've had some success against them, and and hopefully we can continue that success tonight. What would you say the main differences were between the two teams? I, I think we just our special teams are just maybe a little bit better, and uh, you know goaltending. I think our goaltending played very well in, in in all the games. Now, how important is that first goal going to be for you tonight, especially playing away in front of a huge crowd? Oh, I, it, on the road, the first goal is very important for the away team. Uh, you know, if we can score, we're going to make them hopefully change their game plan a little bit. If we, you know, if it doesn't happen, well, we'll just re, we'll refocus and uh, play accordingly. Thoughts ahead of tonight's game. Do you think it's going to be a battle of the netminders? I hope so. Uh, both goaltendings are, you know, both goaltenders are very, are very good. Uh, they, they stop a lot of pucks that they shouldn't. Uh, you know, I expect a very low-scoring game tonight. I feel a physical game too. Look forward to it. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Well, we'll let Strax head back to the Nottingham Panthers dressing room while we take a look at some more of the action from Saturday night. Talking us through this is Chris Ellis. Five Flyers went into the game buoyed by their first Elite League win over the Hull. Stingrays, of course, it took them 15 attempts and they took the lead when 
Siddle straight out of the box. He'd been off for slashing. He broke away. And at 2.44, he gave the home side the lead against the lead leaders, Belfast Giants. The Giants hit back eventually in the first session. A scramble around the net. Peacock with the final touch. It was 1-1, ninth goal of the season. And then another man fresh out the box. It's five on three until Lloyd comes out the box to make it five on four. So still short-handed. And Lloyd scores. It's his sixth goal of the season. And the Belfast Giants led by two goals to one. Bit of fisticuffs going on here. It's Dowd against Gunn. But really, the fight never really got going. And that one was broken up. But at the end of two sessions, it was only 2-1 to Belfast. And five flyers, could they cause an upset and have their second win in a row? Into the third session, the puck is stolen off Hart Manis by Garside. And there is Pele, delayed penalty. Pele scores his first of the night. So 3-1, and it is going to go Belfast way just gradually. All sorts going on here, plenty of scrambles and near misses. It's power play time for the Belfast Giants, and Reback from left point makes it 4-1. 25 seconds later, Keith made it 5-1. And then Pele got into the act with goal number two for him. Mason with the pass. That made it three goals in 75 seconds and two for Pele. Now, Lloyd hits the pipes. Power play time for the Belfast Giants once more. Good strong work from Peacock and then from Crane. And you can see that Crane shoots, rebounds, and Pele completes his hat-trick, his second hat-trick of the season. And that's the end of the scoring. Final score, five flyers one, Belfast seven. After a scoreless first session, power play time early on in the second for the Steelers. Legree shot, left point saved, and Finity mops up the rebound for a ninth goal of the season. At the other end, Brayhead thought they'd leveled, but that was washed out. They were celebrating, but the puck had been kicked in. And after a bit of deliberation, it was revealed to them that there was no goal. So 1-0. Then it became the Jeff Legree show. Tate setting up Legree for his first of the night and the tenth of the season. The other assist going to Squires. And then the same two players combined for Legree's 11th of the season. He sneaked out from the back to make it 3-0. And Sheffield very much in control. And he completed a straight hat-trick in 12 minutes, a one-timer from the right circle on the power play. So it was 4-0 and very much game over. And then a controversial moment. Carl Bruce thrown out for checking to the head. The Elite League disciplinary panel looked at that one. The three-match ban was upheld, not really for the first hit, but it's the second incident that the disciplinary committee had a problem with when he used his forearm to push Colt King's head into the glass. Anyway, that seemed to spark the home side into life. A giveaway by Burnstill saw Bayrak get a 14th goal of the season, short-handed, 4-1. Could there be a comeback? Well, the home side had to wait until the final moments, 16 seconds from time, and Bayrak got his second of the game with the man advantage on the power play. But final score in Scotland, Brayhead 2, Sheffield 4. The first of two home games in as many days for the Edinburgh Capitals and they were on the back foot to start. Good pressure by the Hall Stingrays in the early stages and they had a couple of chances on net but then the Edinburgh Caps broke a rink-length pass from Safar and Yarolin finishes backhand, neat finish, 17th of the season. He is one of the best forwards in the league right now. So that's 1-0, 350 gone now. Breaking down the right-hand side is Yarolin, and Yarolin proves that he has more to his game than just scoring goals. Holds down the play, comes to right point, deflection in front of goal, but it's Beleko's goal, a fifth of the season, just past the 10-minute mark in the first session. It's 2-0 to the home side. Great, great start for them. Now, giveaway behind the net, and then to the right-hand side. Tender pulls a neat move, shot in on net, it's saved. Couple of deflections, Tender tries to get to the rebound, but Eventually, it's Davis for his fourth of the season. Tender getting one assist, Cloutier the other. So we're 2 1 at 14 04. Face off win here by Haleko. Becomes a bit of a, a one man show, though. The puck's given away. Haleko again. He goes to get the puck, pushes it to one side. It's picked up on the far side by Zembergs. Few rebounds, and it is Haleko with the final touch. Sixth goal of the season for him, and they were the goals all in the first period. It finishes Edinburgh 3. All Stingrays won. OK, time for us to take a break, but join us shortly when we'll have more action from the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports.
sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Hello and welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. This week we're from Sheffield for the second Steelers-Panthers game of the season. We'll have more of that in a bit, but first let's head to Hull where Fife were the visitors. Here's Chris Ellis. A battle at the wrong end of the table and the best chance of the first period went to Fife. Hamilton, what a move on young McCluskey but could find no way through Boucher. So, a nil-nil first period, no goals in the opening session in Hull. Into period two, Silverthorne out to Campbell, right-hand side, Osman through, backhand, top shelf, great finish. An eighth goal of the season for Osman. It's 1-0 to the Hull Stingrays in the second session. But the Stingrays pressing forward, then a slip. It enables at this point a two-on-one break, bearing down on Boucher. Siddle tries to get to the rebound, but another good save from Boucher to keep the scoreline at 1-0. But once more, breakaway on Boucher. This time he can't hold on to the puck, and Siddle gets a 13th goal of the season. Hart Manis' shot wasn't held, and it became a 1-1 game. Now, Silverthorne coming into the offensive zone. It is charged down, all sorts going on, no one clears, and Silverthorne puts away his own rebound on the power play. Poor defensive work that Silverthorne could get to that puck. It is 2-1 now to Hull. Hull come forward once more. Great passing between Tendler and Davis, and Tendler gets a 12th goal of the season. 3-1 game then. It is certainly now going in the Hull Stingray's favour. Late power play. Just over a minute to go, and that's Stewart left-hand side through traffic, a fourth of the season. It's 3-2. Then from the face-off, Cloutier gets pushed down. There's a bit of pushing and shoving. He doesn't like it. A few players getting involved. In the end, the penalty's called with Campbell and Siddle for roughing. The two of them going, players getting involved. Holsting race 3-5-2. The Capitals were looking for their second win at home of the weekend to make it a four-point weekend, and they had the better start. Hartman and McKenzie working hard, and Yarolin is there, right side, 3.35 gone, and 18th of the season. It got better in the second session. It is a good move from McKenzie. To Safar, off the backboard, and Yarolin pounces. Goal number 19 of the year. Goal number two of the night. It's 2-0 game. Still in the second session, just over two minutes to go in period two. This time, Haleko and Sladok are involved. It comes to left point, and there's Vileko. Shot from left point. It's a goal. Goal number six for him of the season. 3-0 at the end of two periods. So to the third session, and Brayhead needed a reply, and it came from the former Panthers for Jade Galbraith, out behind the net to the right side, shot comes in and he gets first to the rebound it's 3-1, so it is game on at 3-1, Brayhead very much in it, now a big hit centre ice, Bayrak, boom he lays out Petrina few players look at what's going on big legal hit, centre ice and he's down though Petrina looks hurt Got a bit of attention from Sladok and Safar to check he's OK. He's helped from his feet, but he looks a bit groggy, but he gets to his feet after some attention. So he goes off the ice and doesn't look too bad. Just slightly, I say. Just looks slightly worse for wear. So it was 3-1 at this stage, and now McPherson and Campbell combine, and Matt Hayward is going towards the net, gets to that puck. 3-2. It's a one-goal game. But the empty net goal was to go Yarolin's way. Yarolin had 28 goals in 2003-04 in Slovakia. He's already up to 20. He's already got more points this season than he did last season in 57 games. Yarolin there, as I say, into an empty net. There's some stats about a guy very few of us know much about. It ends Edinburgh 4, Brayhead 2. As ever, man of the people down here on concourse before the start of the Steelers versus Panthers game. I got Keith, I got Tony, I got Michael, we got our old mate Jono, and we're going to discuss all things Steelers and Panthers. Michael, the Nottingham Panthers, they own the Sheffield Steelers right now. You must be happy. <laughs> yeah, very pleased. 3 0. 
uh, just hope the success continues this season. Why is that? They're a better team. You think? Oh, yes. Okay. I'm convinced. You're convinced. This is not safe territory for you Steelers guys. <laughs> yeah. What is it the Sheffield Steelers haven't done against Nottingham so far this year? Well, they haven't scored enough goals, obviously. Um, I don't think they're getting in the netminder's face as much as they should do, which will give them more chance of scoring for the rebounds. Kowalski's been brilliant, hasn't he? Yeah. You've got to be hoping for a big night from Decaro tonight. Yeah. yeah, I hope so, yeah. Uh, as I say, Decaro, as he said, we've not been having the cover for him. He's, and plus, I think we've been in the penalty box too many times with Nottingham. I think we, we're suffering all the time with that. Is emotion a problem for the Steelers? Is Finity got the Steelers too high? Uh, possibly. I don't really know, really. I, I, I don't know what we can put it down to. I mean, they, see, they can beat everybody else. They just not even seem to be have problems against. I don't know. It might be the pressure of what the, the crowd expects. Um, we, I mean, we usually beat Nottingham, so when we lose a few, you know, you get a bit upset. Jono, you've seen so many of these games, you must be gloating right now, because Nottingham are in such a strong position, aren't they? Not only just against Sheffield, but in the league as a whole. Yeah, I think the, the key is the defence and netminding has been outstanding so far this year, and it's not general to a Nottingham team to have a really good defence, but this year we seem to have it and it's paying dividends. Matthew Myers, I love Matthew Myers. How important was it to get Matthew Myers back into the lineup when you thought you were going to be without him for so long? Well, surprise really, but you know, really good for the team. Is uh, he needed to be back quickly, and he got back quickly. Three and zero. Are you going for four and zero tonight? I never predict before a game. I'm quite superstitious. Superstitious. Are the Steelers going to get on the board tonight, guys? I think they get on the board, but uh, I'm not going to forecast no. the score. <laughs> no way. What about yourself? I, will, I hope they win. You but, hope they win. Uh, it's still, I say Nottingham didn't play last night. We've had that long road trip coming back from Brazed, and it's forced to be tired, I think, anyway. And Nottingham's going to be fresh. OK, well, it's all, all, all very tight here. One more thing before we go. Our mate Jono here is on a round Britain trip and for a very good cause as well. Jono, explain more. Yeah, in March, uh, me and three friends, we're going to go to... Um, four games in four countries in four days so we're starting in Cardiff on the 15th of March we're in Belfast the next night Brayhead the night after and then Nottingham on the Sunday and we'll be visiting all the elite league rinks in between and it's for a great cause as well yeah we're doing it for Cancer Research UK okay so if you see Jono and his mates yes he has got a few then make sure you put a few coins in the bucket and help him for a great cause right more hockey action coming up now Talking you through the rest of the action and the games from around the weekend is Chris Ellis. There was an explosive start to this game. Two goals in the first 97 seconds. First of all, great feed from Turner and Seaman then puts away his own rebound. A ninth goal of the season at 1.25. Dundee were ahead. Belfast came back though, dumping on net. It wasn't cleared by Whitley. Well, it was actually, but it was straight to Lloyd. Lloyd shoots through traffic. 1-1 one, one at 1.37. A seventh goal of the season for Lloyd. Belfast then start to make some pressure here. They think they've scored. Goal for Peacock. No, it's not. Net was off his moorings. Tom Darnell right there. You can see him putting the net back onto its moorings. Belfast asking the questions for the net put back in place. So no goal. We stayed at 1-1. Power play time now for the visitors. Peacock and Dow combining. And the score is by Crane. He scores a sixth goal of the season at 7.34. Plenty going on in this first session. Belfast then began to take control. Crane and Garside combining. The puck comes to Rebecca at right point. It's 3-1. 12.45 gone in the game. All sorts going on. And plenty of goals and plenty of action. There's still time for more in the first session. Hutchins and Hughes combine. Forward comes McLean. And he gets the final touch there. It's 3-2. And we're not even at the end of the first session. Now into the second session. Turnover. Breakaway by the Dundee Stars, McLean and Wishart involved, and Ross McIntosh with a third goal of the season. There's a great story about him on the Dundee Stars website and on the Elite League website at the moment. In 2007, he fractured three vertebrae in the Junior Conference Finals in Hull, and he fully recovered. Now there you saw Puck in the net, but Murphy had frozen the puck, and Dono called that one down, so that one wasn't given. Good chance there for a Wada. Whitley makes the save. What a good save by Whitley to keep it at 3-3. Penalty shootout time now. Pele denied. Huge chance. Good pad save there from Murphy. Still at 0-0. Mason denied there by Whitley. 
Can Mitchell be the first player to get on target? Mitchell, he's denied. Glove save by Murphy. Good glove save. So Peacock, what can he do? Scores. So it is a one nil advantage. Dan Seaman needs to score to keep the stars in it. No pad save, Murphy. That's a good comeback from the Dundee Stars from 3 1 down. But they only get the one point, and Belfast take the two to make it a four point weekend in Scotland. Dundee three, Belfast four. Cardiff held the bragging rights going into the Skydome after their victory in the first of the back-to-back -back games in Wales on Saturday. And, of course, the last time they went into Coventry, they won by two goals to nil. Power play goal for them, first of all, Roth and Richardson assisting on Beerbrayer's ninth of the season. Then a turnover. There you see Mark Richardson on the puck. Effectively, it's two-on-one because Wood's out of position. And it is Matska. Nice finish, a sixth of the season for him. It's 2 nil, and that's the way it was at the end of the first session. Goal number three arrived. Great goal as well. Tic-tac-toe. Smith and Matska are credited with the assist. It looks so easy. And there's Phil Hill. Near post finish. 3-0. 3.20 into the second session. Then a giveaway by Phillips. Right onto the stick of Pierce. Good move from McRae. And he puts that one away eventually. Great move, though. Great finish to draw the netminder. 4.45 into the second session. 4-0 and effectively game over. But pass out defence. Guthrie and Kral involved. Fussy goes through. Beats the man. He's happy to score. That's only 4-1. Now, face off. Look how quick this is. You can almost count the seconds. Face off win by Guthrie to Kral. Kral tries to shoot, it takes deflection, Pierce can't clear, and it comes to Wood from the blue line. Eight seconds had elapsed between the two goals. There can't be many quicker goals between each other ever in the history of the Elite League. Turnover once more, Coventry were on fire, they were moving it around nicely, Kral and Phillips this time, and it was Guthrie in 11th of the season. So that's 4-3, we're still in the second session, would you believe? But third period action, great skate from Dobbin, look, one end of the ice to the other, backhand pass, out wide for Matska and Voth is driving the net. 5-3 and that was going to be a big comeback now for the Blaze if they were going to do it. They pulled the net minder so they've got the extra man going into the final stages. Kral and Fulgham well they combine and it's Owen with the final touch. Goal number five of the season for him. But those Devil fans who made the trip, they're the happiest. No points for the Blaze but two for the Devils. It finishes in the Sky Dome. The Coventry Blaze four, the Cardiff Devils five. Time for us to take a break, but join us shortly as we've got plenty more action from around the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League, including the game here tonight of the Steelers and the Panthers. See you in a bit. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Hello and welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. Now we're moments away from showing you the highlights of tonight's game between the Steelers and the Panthers. But what I have got to do is, as always, ask you, Dave, who you're going to go for. I don't know if I need to ask, but... Always got to go for the Sheffield Steelers in the Motor Points Arena, Anna. Why? It's about time the Sheffield Steelers close the door on the Nottingham Panthers. It's about time, if they are serious title contenders, that they actually take points off the Nottingham Panthers. Two big keys. John DeCaro has to outgoalie Craig Kowalski for the first time in this series. And secondly, the Sheffield Steelers defence have got to be super tight against the likes of Fox, Beauregard, and David Clark. If they can do that, the Sheffield Steelers can win this game. Well, I'm going to go for the Nottingham Panthers, not just to counteract you. I'm going to take a leaf out of Doug Christensen's book, and I'm purely going on statistics. OK. The biggest rivalry in British ice hockey returns. The Nottingham Panthers here at the Sheffield Steelers. Takes pass, takes a big deflection. Squires again. Has already got a goal. There's a chance out in front, and Tate scores! Steelers open their account, and having been held for six periods by the Panthers, they need just 48 seconds to get on the board here.
Benedict to Lakovic. Nottingham with Benedict again. He's sniping here. De Caro hangs on. Well, neat play by the Nottingham Panthers. Corey Nielsen intercepted again by Squires. Steelers have a partial breakout, and now with Legree, they have a full one. Legree off the post. Good snapshot along the ice. Here's Harima, who has a, an NHL caliber shot. Really does release the puck well, but it's given away, and RG Flath will come the other way. There's a drop pass. Here's Clark. Good save by Kowalski. What a chance, short handed. And Neil Clark has had two dandies in this game. They're at the wrong end of the ice here, though. That's a poor pass. Champagne concedes possession to Stevenson. He'll look to shoot. Long rebound comes back towards Hewitt on the block. Oh, <laughs> what a take by Stevenson on the slap pass from Colt King. Great penalty killing by the Sheffield Steelers. Still 40 seconds remain for the Panthers to get some attack zone time. A one-man advantage still. Burns still launches it down the ice. Ashley Tate is free here. He forgets the puck, though, and Stevie Lee will clear away. Francis with a good backhand to Beauregard. Touch pass to Champagne. Now Nottingham can build for really the first time on this power play. Opportunity for a shot equal to it, though, is Rod Saric, who makes the brave block. Can't clear the zone, but now Steelers will go, and they've got a two-on-one. What a chance this is. It's with Legui to Tate. Scores! Second of the game, a short-handed marker for Ashley Tate, his sixth of the season. Nine minutes and 36 seconds. Steelers with a good penalty kill. Leaves it for Beauregard, he's got a shooting lane, does send this one in, takes a, a bit of a deflection. Second chance, Beauregard, and second chance again for the Panthers, that goes over the top. I think there was an open net there to aim at, as Esders will try and get the puck in deep. Burns still into the zone. Wilson, oh, that's a poor play. Second chance, Steelers drive the net, do they score? Lights on, referee says no goal. And this is a moment of controversy. Ashley Tate thought he had his first period hat-trick against his former club. Off the side of the net it goes. Now, Lee, round the boards. King with a little tap. Hewitt, oh, goodness me. Kowalski's skate clanging against the post there. Into the zone he goes. It's a good one-man forecheck. Rubbed out by Stevenson, and then he hits him in the back of the head, and these two are going to go. We've got some dancing here, folks. The experienced Stevenson against Lee. Nottingham trying to pick things up here. Strong as an ox is Lee. Just tied up at the moment. Lee throwing the more punches, and now Stevenson will come back. Trying to get that right arm free. Lee's got a good grasp on this one, though. A couple of body shots, and now Stevenson goes to the head. Uppercut from Lee. These two having a good old battle, and eventually Lee tosses his man to the ice. Both sets of supporters appreciate it. Good reverse pass as well by Clark. And Flath will go into the zone. Drives hard at the goalie, and now Flath and Wilson have words. Flath looks at Wilson. Play continues. That's going on well behind everything. Puck goes down low and a goal. Nottingham redirect it home. And there's a bit of afters going on here as well. Flath steps into it. He and Wilson talk about going. And now Finity gets involved. And here we go, folks. Fox and Finity, the linesmen, are involved. Levers having words with Flath. And Wilson trying to get across as well. Colt King stands on the ice. Into the corner it goes. It's five on five. Looks more like a power play as Francis goes towards the net. Hewitt will try and hack clear. Now here's Huttle. Can't get it out of his zone. Harima goes in hard on the board. Steelers with Rod Saric will battle hard for it. Now here's Beauregard. Chance out in front and an equaliser. Danny Myers. And Nottingham in double quick time arrays that two goal deficit. And Sheffield, having been in control, now face equality. 
having lost their discipline, they've been punished to Wilson. Wilson shoots, long rebound, second chance, Francis. Steelers just scrambling like mad around their own net, and they don't clear the zone again. That was poor from Esders. Nottingham working harder than the Steelers right now. And this is a direct opposite viewpoint of the first period, as now we get Francis and Hewitt going, and this is a good scrap on the boards. Neither can get free. Both hanging on to one another. Francis gets Hewitt's helmet off. Hewitt holding in tight, and now Francis trying to get the shots off. Hewitt again hanging on to Francis, trying to release that helmet. Bit of a headlock as now Hewitt lets go with the right hand. Linesman step in, and this is a feisty one. Another decent bout between these two. We're also going to see the other combatants leave the penalty box to make way. Ashley Tate doesn't clear the puck away, and now Nottingham with the chance. Glove save by De Caro, robbing Brandon Benedict. Burn still couldn't collect a bouncing, bobbling puck. Now Laguy can relieve some of this pressure that's been constant. Lapine back there for the Panthers. This should be an icing call, but can the Steelers get there first? Burn still takes a long route. Does how's that not icing? How is that not icing? Huge hit by Benedict. Nottingham maintain possession. Here is Legui again in his own zone. Steelers try and clear down the ice. They do. No icing will be called. They'll take a line change. Both sides now elect to do that. And Corey Nielsen will uh, send one towards his own bench. Picks out Myers. Steelers bang it off the boards the other way. Nielsen will go the other side to Champagne. Big hit for Thomas, he misses though. And now Nottingham with a chance out in front. It's Matt Myers in there, hit hard by Clark. Champagne on the boards and he can't be quelled. Still Champagne, still Champagne, well blocked. That's going to hurt Burnstall, that was a stinger. RG Flath will go chasing. Ian Wilson have words. It's been all Nottingham in the second session. Five minutes and 46 seconds of it so far. We've got a level game, two apiece. And a shot from Wilson that goes wide of the target. Here's Esther's for Sheffield. And now he comes out to a different scenario. And all credit to Nottingham for how they've done this. Laguit can't clear his own zone. Nottingham really forcing Sheffield. And now Harima again, he's got a chance. Tries to go short side, and DeCaro equal to that. Legui still can't clear his zone. It goes to Beauregard, looking for the wraparound. Cleared away, second chance for Myers. Another rebound, and Steelers, through Finity, will try and clear. It's with Colt King, who will go chasing. He could get there first, King. Does get there first, no icing called. But Myers does a great job, and Steelers are caught here. It's Benedict, he's in all alone. Benedict! Good save! Panthers fans thought they'd scored. Did that come off the post? There's going to be a conversation now. Goal light didn't go on. Murray Hansen points to the face-off circle. Well, it won't count. Flaff goes forward on the draw. It's sent into the corner. Lapine. Oh, it's given away. Flaff will battle again for that. But Nottingham just seem to leave it all to one another, and now they will break away with Myers. Into the offensive zone, they've got a chance here, Lapine! Just didn't get enough of that as Clark goes into the boards with his man and they're just hanging on to one another right now. Champagne, Sheffield are scrambling, two players go after the same puck, there's space here, Lapine shoots into the glove of John DeCaro. Here's a chance for Nottingham, what an opportunity, Lakovic scores! Waved away by the referee, Mori Hansen. A third goal disallowed of the evening. Now Finity into the zone is Hewitt, still Hewitt sweeps it goal bound, sent away. 
Finity finds himself in the net. And then Kowalski falls over. And here we go, we're going to see a massive, massive moment here. As there's a lot of pushing and shoving. Finity was trying to get up off his haunches. He was leaning on his stick, and Wilson was trying to grab hold of Finity. Finity is going to get tossed to the penalty box, I think, here. Four on four, five minutes, and then it will be penalty shots. But we need somebody to be a winner here. Will it be Sheffield? Will it be Nottingham? Now's when the big horses have to come to the stable as Le Guy fires into the body of Kowalski. Myers has already helped himself to a goal tonight. And he'll now change for Corey Nielsen as the Panthers have offensive zone. Possession, but the Steelers have it back now. It's with Thomas. Thomas will come into the zone still. Thomas would be an unlikely hero! He is the hero! He dangled his way into the offensive zone, and that'll do it! Found space as he entered to the zone. And then with Kowalski cheating over, he fired it high into the corner. And the Sheffield Steelers defeat the Panthers by three goals to two. Ryan, congratulations. A great way to win a game like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, over, over the moon. Um, it was a pretty even-fought game, I think. Uh, you know, just, just happy to happy to get the two points against these guys. Finally, we were etching closer and closer. And, and you know, th this is a huge confidence booster for us. It ebbed and flowed, didn't it? Sheffield seemed to have, you know, all the flow going its way in that first period. But then Nottingham came back, especially at the beginning part of the second period, to tie it up. Yeah, they took it to us in the second there, and, and they had us on our back heels. And you know, it, it, these things happen when you got two competitive teams. You got two good teams. They, like I said, I think we won the first. They won the second. And probably split the third. And, and you know, we're we're happy to get the uh, the overtime win. A couple of fights, lots of battles. It seems the sta the Steelers Panthers rivalries well and truly back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think uh, it doesn't you know it doesn't hurt when when the two the two head coaches despise each other, and that's what we got now. And so you know, I think it builds from that and down. And, and you know, I don't think there's much love loss here when we play these guys. It's uh, it's always going to be, and it, it needs to be. And I think it, it's it's about time we got the the rivalry back. Talk us through overtime, Mark Thomas. Not a man that sees you know a lot of goal scoring opportunities, and for him to get the winner. Yeah, I mean you kind of always root for the underdog, and uh, you can tell when he when he scored it that I think there wasn't a bum in the seat. Um, you know the, the the fans support it, and, and everybody loves it. you. Know he doesn't get a lot of credit for what he does, and when he goes and does something like that, and it, it's a, it's a treat to watch, and, and it's a, you know I'm, I'm very happy for for Mark. Corey, a great game of hockey for six or seven thousand fans to watch. What was he allowed to play tonight? Hot. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, real hot in the building. Yeah. Great atmosphere in here, and I thought the fans were really loud. Our fans that we brought were loud as well, and and. Uh, for the first period, they, I thought uh, Sheffield played very, very well. They came in, they, they exploded on us. We couldn't get the puck out of our zone, and consequently, we were down 2 nothing. I thought we responded real well in the second. Um, got those two goals back, and then in the third, it was a, a coin flip, and, and uh, that's what happened at the end. Yeah. What changed between the first period and the second? Sheffield completely in ascendancy for 20 minutes, and then you just took over the second middle period. I think the start the start was a combination of a couple of things. I mean, we, we we didn't have any ice yesterday. We didn't skate. It was a it was a little bit for us to get going. I thought, and and uh, that as well. They they played very very well. They got the puck in deep. They forechecked well. They kept it on the boards, and and uh, they hemmed us in. So, uh, the second period, the, the difference was we just played a little bit better in the neutral zone, and, and it got us in, onto our forecheck. We got the puck deep, and and it gave them a little bit back of their medicine. It's a great elite league this season, isn't it? And you know those top four or five teams on any given night, it's it's going to go all the way down to the wire. Yeah, and the bottom teams can be sticky too. So you get in those rinks, and then uh, it's going to be some tough games. So uh, it's it's been a, a challenge at the start, and, and I think each team is finding each game tough. So it's always good for for the fans who want to come in. Time now for another break, but don't go anywhere as we round up the rest of the highlights and look forward to the games coming your way this weekend. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports.
Hello and welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports where we've just seen a great game of hockey and a fantastic win for the Sheffield Steelers. Edge of your seat kind of stuff, wasn't it Dave? Well Hannah, that game had a little bit of everything didn't it folks? It had hits, it had fights, it had a first period dominated by Ryan Finity's Steelers, a second period dominated by Corey Nielsen's Panthers and then an edge of your seat third period and it was exhausting to watch it and then an overtime finish It was as like well. a game of tug of war, wasn't well, it? Well, it, it was because that first period was all the Sheffield Steelers and it was funny, you spoke to Rick Strachan earlier and you said, well, it surely is a benefit for the Panthers not playing on the Saturday. But Nottingham, to me, looked like a team that hadn't seen ice on Saturday, a little sluggish in that first period, and the Steelers took full advantage. Nielsen, though, steadied the ship as Corey Nielsen can do, and in the second period, boy, did the Panthers come back and, and come back hard. I also asked Rick as well in the interview that, you know, I said that the Nottingham Panthers, they'd owned the games over the Sheffield Steelers in the recent weeks. Not tonight, the Steelers deservedly so won this one. What a transformation in the four games played between these two teams. The two Challenge Cup games, all Nottingham. Nottingham didn't just beat Sheffield, they killed Sheffield on both occasions. But last Saturday in uh, the NIC, a 1-0 game. Today, a 3-2 game. You can't put a fine piece of paper between these two great clubs. Uh, you know, fantastic advert for the sport as well. And we've got to mention Mark Thomas's goal at the end there. I mean... Well, Mark Thomas, an unlikely hero for the Sheffield Steelers, but you recall he did the same against the Cardiff Devils at the back end of last season. Mark Thomas was the guy who scored that overtime winner against the Devils, and that was the goal that really won the league for the Sheffield Steelers. So he's their, he's their overtime specialist. He certainly he is. is. <laughs> well, that's not the only great game of hockey we're going to see this week. Let's have a look at the rest of the action from the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League. Brayhead had a point to prove after Edinburgh skated to victory in the league meeting in Murrayfield. And McPherson got the first goal of the night, a ninth of the season. 1-0 Brayhead then at 7.06. He doubled the advantage and doubled his tally for the night. At 12.10 on the power play, Bayrak had banished up with the assist. But back came the visitors, Haleko, with the seventh goal of the season. Menton, the man, the provider. So 15-31, it was 2-1 at the end of the first session. Into the second session, and Campbell and Walker set up their player coach, Drew Bannister. He got goal number five, and then two goals in 41 seconds. Saw McPherson score. That was his hat-trick. So 4-1. Very much in control were the Brayhead clan. It became 5-1 when young Aidan Fulton had the crowd on their feet. His first ever professional goal. Lovely moment for him. 5-1 and it was all going Brayhead's way. It became 6-1 when another youngster, Hayward, got on target. But back at the other end, 54 seconds later, Zemberg with goal number five of his Edinburgh career. So that made it 6-2. And would it be interesting going into the third? Well, nearly 10 minutes into that final session, McPherson could completed a four goal night for him so that's 12 for the season and there was still time for more action Adam Walker Hayward and Campbell combining and Walker with goal number four of his Brayhead season it finishes in the Scottish Derby Brayhead eight Edinburgh two so here's confirmation of all the results this weekend on Saturday, Sheffield beat Brayhead 4-2, Cardiff beat Coventry and Edinburgh beat Hull. The score there, 3-1, Belfast beat 5-7-1. Move on 24 hours on to Sunday and Cardiff beat Coventry 5-4, Belfast beat Dundee and Edinburgh beat Brayhead 4-2, the score there, and Hull beat 5-3-2. And finally, the Sheffield Steelers beat their fierce rivals, the Nottingham Panthers, 3-2, the score there. And there's confirmation of this week's midweek results. On to the league table then, and it's Belfast that are still at the top. Nottingham Panthers are five points behind, and the Sheffield Steelers are six points behind, but they still do have quite a few games in hand there. Still very tight between Coventry and Cardiff, and Fife remain bottom of the league after their losses this weekend. And Edinburgh's midweek win over Brayhead sees them climb above them in the standings. So that rounds up all of the action we have for you this week, but don't worry, we've got plenty of great games coming your way this weekend. Starting on Saturday the 26th of November at the Odyssey Arena where the Belfast Giants take on the Brayhead clan. In Dundee, the Coventry Blaze are the visitors. Fife and Edinburgh share a Scottish derby and the Nottingham Panthers are at home to the Hull Stingrays at the NIC. Sunday, November the 27th sees Cardiff at home to the Five Flyers. Coventry Blaze entertain the Nottingham Panthers. The Edinburgh Capitals take on the Dundee Stars and the Brayhead clan are the visitors in Hull. Midweek hockey action as well, Wednesday, November the 30th, sees the Brayhead clan at home to the Coventry Blaze and a big game between the Cardiff Devils and the Nottingham Panthers. 
Well, you can see the highlights of all those games and the rest of the action from around the league on next week's show. We're back next Friday, the 2nd of December at 7pm on Sky Sports 4. It'll be a special show as I bring you the action from the Rapids Listers Elite Ice Hockey League, while Simsy will be in Denmark bringing you all the highlights from the Sheffield Steelers in the Continental Cup. So Dave, no Elite League action for the Steelers next week. We're both going on a mini break. I'm going to Cardiff and Dave gets to go to Denmark. Not sure how that one's quite worked out there. But just explain for the people at home that don't know much about the Continental Cup and, and how it works. Well, it's the ice hockey equivalent of the European Champions League as the reigning Elite League champions, the Sheffield Steelers, get to go off to go to Europe and they go to Europe to take on teams from Denmark and Italy and hopefully qualify for the super finals which will take place you know in the new year big opportunity for the Sheffield Steelers they'll go with 11 imports of course because as well as their 10 regular imports Mike Ramsey's back that will help the Sheffield Steelers I'll tell you for why I'm not a great fan of the Continental Cup and the British team's participation in it for the sole reason that you lose a weekend of games and you have to make those games back up later in the season. Teams therefore overplay. History also shows us that teams get injuries out at the Continental Cup and it affects them when they come back. So it's not all good for the Sheffield Steelers. They'll go there with great enthusiasm. They'll want to do Britain and the Elite League proud. But you know what? I think Anna, the bread and butter, is the Elite League Championship here. And sometimes by going to the Continental Cup, it can affect your future chances in this league competition. Well, we wish the Steelers all the very best of luck flying that flag for the Elite League. And Dave, I fully expect a present on your return. Duty free. Well, that's all we've got time for today. So thank you for watching and we shall see you next week. Solicitors, sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Accident compensation and medical negligence claims.